welcome dear students today i am here with the second chapter of democratic politics that is federalism now this chapter is available in two parts and this is the first part of the chapter now federalism in the previous chapter power sharing here we noted one point that one state government was formed in belgium and it was not subordinate to central government it was in it was independent to take its own decisions the chapter federalism put forwards the same idea of power sharing so federalism is a new term for you so let me first of all tell you that what is federalism now federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between a central authority that is central government and various constituent units of the country means between the central government that is central authority and various constituent units means the different various state governments or union territories this is what federalism is federalism is a system of government in which the power is divided between central authority that is state government and various constituent units means different states of the country the power is divided now if we talk about federalism there are two types of government one is unitary and another one is federal unitary government either there is only one level of government or the constituent units are subordinate to central government means in unitary form of government one central government is there and state governments are also there but they are subordinate to the central government means they are not independent this happens in unitary government now second one is your federal form of government federal form of government the central government cannot order the state to do something state government has power of its own means they are independent in federal form and it is not answerable to the central government so two things i discussed that is one is unitary another one is federal now let us have a look at the key features what are the features of federalism the first feature and the most important not most important but one of the important feature is there are two or more levels of government there are two means central government and state government more levels means you can have local government also so there should be two or more than two levels of government now the second feature of federalism is different tiers of government govern the same citizens but each tier has its own jurisdiction in specific matters of legislation taxation and administration just suppose i am citizen of a country india so i come under the jurisdiction means i come under the jurisdiction yes jurisdiction is a new term for you the area over which someone has legal authority the area over which someone has legal authority means 
I am a citizen of this country and I come under the jurisdiction of central government also, state government also and local government also. So different tiers of government govern the same citizens but each tier has its own jurisdiction in the matters of legislation, taxation and administration. In short, you can say that I am governed by Prime Minister also, I am governed by Chief Minister also, or on the other hand, I am governed by the uh, Mayor. I live in city, so I could say Mayor, Mayor also. Now, third type, the jurisdiction of the respective levels or tiers of government are specified in the Constitution means what are those matters legislation taxation administration apart from that some other matters are also there other subjects are also there which is clearly specified that these are the matters which come under the power of central government means central government is having authority to take certain decisions these are the subjects on which state government take, can take decisions so it is clearly specified in the constitution now the fourth one is the fundamental provision of the constitution cannot be unilaterally changed by one level of government such changes require the consent of both the levels of government means the fundamental provisions we the people of india the preamble the the fundamental provisions of the constitution cannot be changed by one level of government means it cannot be changed by central government alone consent is required from the other level of the government that is state governments their consent is also required to change the provision of the fundamental provision of constitution now fifth one is courts have courts have the power to interpret the constitution and the power of different levels of government the highest court acts as an empire if disputes arise between different levels of the government in the exercise of their respective powers, the highest court, that is Supreme Court of India, can interpret in between and give its decision. Next one is your sources of revenue for each level of government is clearly specified to ensure its financial autonomy. Whenever you go to a restaurant or you purchase any of the electrical equipments, you pay SGST and CGST. So SGST is state government's tax and CGST is central government's tax which you pay to central government so sources of revenue of each level of government are clearly specified now the last one is the federal system does has dual objective to safeguard and promote unity of the country while at the same time to accommodate regional diversity. An ideal federal system has both aspects. Mutual trust means between mutual trust between central government and the state government. And agreement and agreement to live together. The exact balance of power between central and the state government varies from one federation to another. 
it varies from one federation to another. India is also a federal country, USA is also a federal country. But the exact balance of power between the central and the state government varies from one federation to another federation. And what is responsible for that? Historical context. Historical changes. Thus, the federal federalism, the federal state, the federation is divided into two parts. One is coming together federation. Another one is holding together federation. Let us first of all discuss coming together federation. Now, if I talk about coming together federation, this route involves independent states, independent states coming together on their own to form a bigger unit. So that by pooling sovereignty, that the boundaries and retaining identity, they can increase their security. When they will increase the boundaries, they increase their security. This type of coming together federation include the USA, Switzerland and Australia. USA, United States of America. Means what happened here? Independent states, they came together to form a bigger unit. And mind you students, here states usually have equal power and are strong in they are strong the state governments are strong in comparison to federal government example is usa switzerland and australia now second type of federation is holding together federation here a large country india take example of india a large country decides to divide its power between constituent states and the national government and what are the what which are the examples india spain and belgium but here central government tends to be more powerful in comparison to states I hope you understood the difference between coming together federation and holding together federation. Now, let us talk about what makes India a federal country. Yes, we fulfill all the terms, all the features of federalism. We have two or more than two levels of government. Jurisdiction, revenue, if you talk about uh, the court, they can interpret in between. So, what makes India a federal country? First of all, we are talking about the subjects which come under central government, the subject which comes under state government. What is that called? The constitution, constitution clearly provided a three-folded distribution of legislative powers between the union government and the state government. Thus, it contains three lists. First one is your union list. It includes subject of national importance such as defense of the country foreign affairs banking communication and currency they are included in this list because we need a uniform policy means uniform for whole for the whole country a uniform policy on these matters throughout the country. The union government alone can make laws relating to the subjects mentioned in the union list. Now, second type of list is your state list. It contains, it contains subjects of state and local importance 
such as police uh, sorry poli uh, sorry police trade commerce agriculture and irrigation the state government alone can make laws relating to the subjects mentioned in the state list now third type of list is your concurrent list now what is concurrent list it includes subjects of common interest where both central and state government both they enjoy their jurisdiction it includes subjects of common interest to both the union government as well as state government such as education forest trade unions marriage adoption and succession both the union as well as the state government can make laws on the subjects mentioned in the list if their laws conflict with each other it, it can happen yes it can happen that what the laws which uh, state government is making and the law which state uh, which uh, central government is making it can conflict so in that situation the law made by the union government will prevail okay that's why i said that if we are uh, we are uh, holding together federation here central government is more powerful now the question comes in our mind what about subjects that do not fall in any of the three list or subjects like computer software that came up after the constitution was made It's computer software the time when constitution was framed at that time computer software was not there according to our constitution the union government has the power to legislate on these subjects means they have union government central government is having the power to make laws on those subjects and these are called residuary subjects now let us talk about how is federalism practical now what we studied what is federalism what are the features of federalism two types of federation also we saw one was coming together another was holding together federation after that we studied why in what makes india a federal country now let us talk about how is federalism practiced the spirit of federalism respect for diversity and desire for living together became a shared ideal in our country so what happened after 1947 when india was declared as independent nation the states were previously provinces were there but after 1947 states were formed now how these states were formed gujarat bihar assam madhya pradesh maharashtra punjab rajasthan many more how these were formed these were formed on the basis of language that's why we call it linguistic states what we call linguistic states the creation of lingu linguistic states was the first and a major test for democratic politics in our country if we look at the political map of india when it began its journey as a democracy in 1947 and that of 2020 we will be surprised by the extent of the changes many old states have vanished and many new states have been created areas boundaries and name of the states have been changed in 1947 
the boundaries of several old states of India were changed in order to create new states. This was done to ensure that people who spoke the same language lived in the same state. Some states were created not on the basis of language, but they were made on the basis of culture, ethnicity and geography. These states include states like Nagaland, Uttarakhand and Jharkhand. Means states were divided on the basis of language. But three states, Nagaland, Uttarakhand and Jharkhand, they were made on the basis of culture, ethnicity and geography. Geographical. When the demand for formation of states on the basis of language was raised, some national leaders feared that it would lead to the disintegration of the country. Because once we have already seen the partition of country in the two parts, India and Pakistan, so our leaders at the time of making new states on the basis of language, they were quite worried about it. But the experience has shown that the formation of linguistic states has actually made the country more united. It has also made administration easier. Now, if we talk about the, um, what you call is language policy. If we talk about language policy. What is the language policy of our country? No national language. Our constitution did not give the status of national language to any one language. Hindi was identified as official language, but Hindi is the mother tongue of only 40% of the Indians. Therefore, there were many safeguards to protect other languages. Because only 40% of the Indians, they could speak or understand Hindi. So to protect other languages, scheduled languages were formed. Besides Hindi, there are 22 other languages recognized as scheduled languages by the constitution. A candidate in an examination conducted for the central government positions may opt to take the examination in any of these languages. Apart from Hindi, 22 others are there. You can see a 20 rupee note or a 100 rupee note. There you can find easily. States to have states, they are having their own official language. Much of the government work take place in the official language of the concerned state. Huh? Yes, of course, spread of Hindi, but with cautious approach. Because we do not like to suffer like Sri Lanka. They didn't adopt a cautious attitude in spreading of the, their language that was Sinhala. But our leaders, they spread of Hindi, yes. It was there, but with cautious approach. No national language was there. According to the constitution, the use of English for official purposes was to stop in 1960. Till 1965, we used to have the official language, means all government orders were in English, but till 1965. Many non-Hindi speaking states demanded that the use of English should continue. Means the states where people, I told you that 40% only could speak Hindi. So many of the non-Hindi speaking states, they demanded that English should be continued as the uh, official language. In Tamil Nadu, this movement took a violent form. The central government responded by agreeing to continue the use of English along with Hindi 
for official purpose means in tamil nadu they can use the they can issue government orders in english also and in hindi also promotion does not mean that central government can impose hindi on states where people speak a different language so this was all about the rich language policy of our country so what we discussed till now we discussed about the linguistic states formation of states language policy now let us talk about center state relationship now prior to 1990 means before 1990 the congress ruled at the center for about 40 years and these were the years when the single party made the government the government at the center ruled the states with biased views means if at the central level central in the central government congress party was there and in uttar pradesh if samajwadi party or bjp was there so the central government didn't favored the government of uttar for, for example i'm saying central government didn't favored the government of uttar pradesh why because both were ruled by two different parties in central government congress was there and in state government bjp or samajwadi party or baspa whatever other government was there so it ruled the states with biased views it supported those states which had a government formed by the same party it favored the states where congress party ruled the government at many occasions dismissed the state governments formed by other parties in the name of law and order situation in other words the center dictated the states and the states had no alternative except to follow the central except the follow follow the except to follow the center now after 1990s a drastic change was there the rise of regional politics in many states has changed the center state relationship significantly this was also the beginning of the era of coalition form of government now what is coalition form of government when a single party is not able to get majority number of seats then two or more than two parties join together to form the government that is called coalition form of government since no single party got a clear majority in lok sabha major national parties had to enter in an alliance with many small regional parties like we are having up and nda united provincial alliance headed by congress and nda national democratic alliance headed by bjp alliances were there this led to a new culture of power sharing and respect for the autonomy of state it became difficult for the central government to dismiss state government in an arbitrary manner means in a wrong way in the name of law and order so this was all about center state relations that's all for this part student i hope you understood thank you and have a nice day